What is up, guys? You're listening to the Hustle Inspires Hustle podcast with Alex Quinn. And today, we're in Miami with Charles Nader, CEO of Doc.com. What's going on, bro? What's up, Alex? Doing great, man. Thanks for thanks for inviting me to the podcast. No, man. This has been a long time coming, man. Thank you. So, so excited to see everything you have going on and everything that we've been through ever since we met, bro. Uh, yeah. for, for those of you who aren't watching, we're actually sitting... Uh, in Charles's apartment here in Miami, where we actually met for the first time, you're actually sitting where I was sitting when we first met, when <laughs> yeah. we first were introduced to each other. So the interesting um, thing. Yeah. it's crazy how much things have changed. How, how long has it been now? Right, like a year? Yeah, it's been about a year. A yeah. year and a half. Yeah, you guys have been doing so many amazing things, guys. If you're just tuning in, so you understand what's going on right now, the leader in telemedicine taking over the entire industry, the disrupting the industry, Doc.com. Is something you guys need to be aware of. You've probably seen it already, heard about it already. But today, we're going to talk about the importance of telemedicine and, of course, cryptocurrency. So, Charles, tell us a little bit about Doc.com and how it came to life. Well, uh, I I started, uh, I, I had the idea for Doc.com uh, years ago. We we started several companies. Uh, well, I, I had I I was a serial entrepreneur. I started several companies years ago. Uh, just you know, since I was a kid, I was working doing things. But there was a time in my life around uh, about a little bit more than ten years ago when I really started thinking like, what should my life be like? And uh, and I started creating a philosophy of life. And I thought uh, I was reading a lot of books by Jim Rohn, uh, listening to a lot of uh, different. Uh, you know, speakers and, and reading books and things like that. And, and really came to, it came to me that, uh, the best thing to do really was to do, to live the best life was to do something good for people and to do something good at large scale. The best ways to start a business really, that's, that's just, uh, the world we live in. So I w I studied medicine in Mexico and, um, with a colleague, we started thinking about different uh, things to do in the healthcare space. Uh, at the time, you know, just being at hospitals, especially in Latin America, you see that there's so many people that just get in line to to be treated, and they don't know what to do. Really, I mean, they just they're just there because they don't have the education in health to actually uh, figure it out. And it's it's incredible to see these lines of people form around hospitals. And it was like, well, why 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 don't they have an easy access to some to a professional a healthcare professional where they can just be uh, they can find out what what's going on see if they can solve it at home instead of wasting their time and money to get to the, these hospitals and these are people that are in extreme poverty so you know combining the uh, the knowledge of the reach of technology with with the uh, the spirit of entrepreneurship that's how we we came up with Originally, it was called Doctor Dice. It was, it was uh, Doctor says in Spanish. Uh, it was Do a network Doctor of Dice, doctors. Sí. Yeah, Doctor Dice. Yeah, and and that company, uh, we ended up changing the name to Docademic after that. After going through an accelerator yeah. program in San Francisco uh, to make it more universal, and then uh, the opportunity came to purchase Doc.com, the domain, which I thought, you know, it was, it was almost like destiny. I thought, wow, that, that name is just the perfect thing for what we're doing. Dude, and that's probably like not even trying to gas you up. That's probably one of the coolest fucking domains there is yeah, right now. Like, yeah. I've told you before in conversation, there is nobody in the medical industry that has a better domain. Like, I think it's just physically impossible. Like, what you have a three letter domain, dude, <laughs> doc.com. Like, yeah, that is amazing. Yeah. That is a really good move on your part, man. You yeah, really was, saw the value in investing the business for that. Oh, uh, it was, it was a, it was a huge, uh, hugely important thing for me. I mean, I, and I still had some, uh, some resistance from my investors. They, they were like, well, you know, is it really necessary? You know, because it wasn't cheap, obviously. But the day <laughs> they transferred it over to us, uh, we had about we had seven offers. One was for ten times more than we paid for it. It was amazing. Just the same day that we that it transferred over to us, it was just. And you know, we're never going to sell it. Just it defines what we do so perfectly. It's it just it was meant to be, man. Yeah. It, it was meant for you to have it and to use that name to push this message of Doc dot com for for you guys listening. You don't necessarily, we haven't gotten to the point in the conversation where you guys necessarily understand the importance of Doc.com, not just for Latin America, which yeah. we were just discussing, but on a global scale, which is what you're actually doing right now. Yeah. 
Well, I'll, I'll tell you, doc.com, we offer free telemedicine and free telepsychology. That means you can download our apps, press a button, and talk to a doctor for free face-to-face through video chat or a psychologist uh, face-to-face through video chat. And it seems like such a simple thing, but sometimes those simple things are, you know, even though they're logical, they're, they're uh, hard to execute because of all the back-end stuff that you have to do. So we had a uh, devise and invent a new business model, and it was uh, com- combining different aspects of uh, tech to- technologies today. So what we do is we compile epidemiological information from the services. That means that we ask people, you know, uh, just general medical things and general psych- psychological things. Uh, and that information we display in real time. It's anonymized healthcare information. That's very useful for governments or scientists, and it's 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 pure science, really. It's epidemiology. It's one of the pillars of medicine. Um, with that information, you can you can see if there's outbreaks. You can see uh, what medications are being consumed. Yeah, man. You can do a lot of things that are in direct relevance to public health, and it's it's really important for uh, for governments to have that information, for uh, you know healthcare industry to have that information. It's anonymized, uh, real time information that, that we, that, that's our product that we sell. But it provides, and it, it provides free basic healthcare for the world. It, that's the way we make it sustainable. So that's our mission really, to provide a form of free basic healthcare for the world that's not dependent on governments or institutions that anyone can just download and use. And they can, you know, it's a basic form, but it really helps a lot of people. I mean, and it's also important to understand that we spend, a majority of our day on a, on a device, right? On our phone or on our laptop. And we're feeding all of these devices data, which could be important, right? But at the end of the day, most of that data that we're feeding it is for entertainment to continue to keep us using these platforms. Now, if we use this same model to be able to better take care of ourselves, it's not only good for the person using it, it's good as a whole for the entire, like the entire world, like as a civilization, like worldwide civilization, we're going to be able to have so many more technological advancements just because of the sheer data that you're going to be able to have to be able to help other people. Like, look at the amazing things that Bill Gates is doing, like, and how he's able to help different areas around the world. And if he had the data that you guys possess around the world, how many people's lives would you guys be able to change? That's that's, that's true. You know, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation is focused on trying to find, uh, trying to categorize information all over the place. I mean, all over the world. And they do it in Africa. They, they currently have a, a program in, in Africa to eliminate certain diseases. And it's really based on epidemiological data that they, they derive from different sources, uh, doctors on the ground that are, they're reporting in real time and things like that. But this, this takes it to a more, uh, massive level. What we do is just, it opens it up to so many more people. And it is a great compliment to current healthcare systems, but, but it is, uh, it is taking advantage of today's technologies in, in, in a very positive way. You know, people always, you say data, they're like, well, what about the privacy issue? And, you know, there's, there's technologies today, like blockchain technology that make data use more transparent. And there, it's already out there. A lot of people don't know about these, these technologies, don't understand how they work. But, but, um, if there's a problem, there's usually a solution. Uh, especially nowadays, we're living in times when it's it's we're going through a transition. Uh, humanity right now, it's 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 so unique in human history with, with all the technology that we have and all that's coming. There's just so many amazing things that are going to be happening, and they're already happening right now that they're going to benefit humanity in a great way. I think so. This is where I see it stand from my perspective, right? So I see a lot of great change, right? I see so much information, so much technology. But in a, in an abundance of technology and information, I also see a lot of misinformation and a lot of people not educated enough, right? So we could be moving so much faster if we put, pay more attention to blockchain technology, if we pay more attention to the cryptocurrencies, we could change as a whole, like the whole, our whole humanity could change, but people are just not educated in that form yet so it doesn't allow it to be mainstream also you know the way governments are set up and different things around the world they've been set up like that for hundreds of years thousands of years it's difficult to change things but in order to advance as a human race to get to that point to where we need to do the things that we need to do to take care of each other protect the earth protect our home our environment 
we need to get to those things by opening up to technology, right? We, we live in a spinning ball in the middle of space. We're spinning around the sun, and we don't know what's going to happen at any point. Right. And we need to be tech, we need to understand what's out there. But we by understanding what's here and how we work, how our brains work, how our psychology works, we're able to better understand how we could help people as a whole by feeding them, by putting them in the right environments, by taking, you know, getting rid of certain diseases. I think it's important for people to open up to new things and don't be afraid for things to change, because in order for things to get better, they have to change. And yeah. nothing ever great happened without adversity. Right. That's true. That's true. You know, uh, Really, technology is a tool, and we are surrounded by examples all over our lives right now that, that you know, technology and science has benefited humanity in such an amazing way. I mean, all the, all the convenience that we have today is uh, due to science and technology, and it's just uh, it's exciting, and it's also, it also provides so much opportunity. There's just so many things that can be done still. There, I think we're just getting started in many ways, you know, it, I remember, uh, I always tell this story, of uh, Jeff Bezos back in 1995, he, he, uh, he told his wife, Hey, I want to start, uh, uh, I want to start selling books on the internet. And the first thing she asked him was, what's the internet? And some people told him, you know, why you, you're coming off of a good job. You're making good money. What are you doing going off and doing this thing? You're selling books. Like, yes. What's wrong and with you, And on the internet, <laughs> and, you know, people didn't even understand what the internet was back then. It was still in its, in its early days. You know, there were, if you tried to explain it back then, it was like, well, a computer talks to another computer. I'm like, well, what does that actually mean? What, you know, what are you talking about? Exactly. Like, <laughs> and that's a kind of, it's kind of like the same, uh, situation right now with blockchain technology. It's, it's such a dive, such a, ample type of technology you can do so many things with it that that a lot of people don't understand that it's a very uh, horizontal innovation so so uh you know i always fall into uh t- trying to teach people what it is but but that's just one of many technologies you know telemedicine being able to talk to someone face to face it may sound that we're all accustomed to it nowadays but you know 10 years ago it was just you know, getting started and it's or is it the things that you would see it in movies, people FaceTiming yeah. each other is like the future. Like, yep. you know, when is that coming? And exactly. here we are, we're sitting here in Miami. We could FaceTime somebody in China right now yep. without an issue, no lag, no exactly. nothing. Exactly. Perfectly. So talk to us a little bit about, you were just speaking about it, blockchain and how it integrates into your doc.com business model and why it could benefit everybody to be, to sure. be using a system like that. Well, there's uh, there's a beauty in blockchain that you can that you can uh, take advantage of. Um, what we do is we hash every time someone uses our service, we hash that data onto a blockchain. Right now, it's being done on the Ethereum blockchain, but the next stage is putting it on our own blockchain, the life chain. And what that means is that uh, it provides a transparent, publicly verifiable way of proving three things. One. You prove that there was someone being treated, the publicly verifiable. So there's no like, how many users do you have? It just straight up right there, transparent for everyone to see. Second thing is you you can view the data that's being shared. So that's that's a huge benefit. So you're being transparent about the use of data. That's it's it's important to understand. You know, with science, science is very heavily data based. So you need the information to to create new things or do advancements in technology. So it provides those two levels, new new improvements in, in the levels of transparency that you have. And the third thing, you can simultaneously reward someone for actually an act for for taking care of themselves. So we're uh, we're teaching people that they can use this free service. And yes, there's data being compiled; it's anonymized, but you're also being paid for it. You're being rewarded for it with a cryptocurrency, all in one fell swoop. And the blockchain does that. It does that all in one fell swoop. So that's, it, it may sound like a simple thing, but it's just the blockchain technology permits us to do that. And it's a great complement. It's a great element to, a component to add to our business model because we are a data company, a healthcare data company. We compile information and do data analytics on it, epidemiological analytics. And to offer that extra layer of transparency and to actually pay people for their data that's just something that that hasn't been able to be done with this level of efficiency and transparency ever so yeah and and it goes back to what i was just saying now we spend a lot of our time on facebook instagram all these companies 
that we're just giving data to, not being paid for it, and they're profiting from it, which is okay. Because, you know, we use their systems, and you know, we enjoy that, and we're able to stay connected. But they innovate in different ways, right? What you're doing is you're collecting data, but you're making it available to science in order for other issues to get solved. You know, Facebook may be solving certain issues. Microsoft may be solving certain issues. But your specific thing is making sure that there's transparency, right, that you could have advancements in medicine and that you could use data to our advantage. Well, look at it this way. Just look at it in the in the simplest form. Most people get colds maybe once a year. Um, there's a flu season. If you can see a group of people getting the flu in a certain region of the country or, you know, a county or wherever, uh, and you can just do something to send them a message and tell them, wash your hands, just a simple thing like that, that can probably save a lot of people's time and money. Uh, because, and lives. Yeah, and lives. Times, yeah. I mean, it, yeah, I mean, it's definitely it, people's lives. Some people get really sick, especially the elderly. Some, you know, the, there's... The, the spread of diseases is something you can contain much quicker if you know the information in real time. So that's so important for society because it increases productivity. You can go to work instead of staying home because you have a cold. You, you don't have to suffer through that. And this model using blockchain technology, incentivizing people to, to actually take care of themselves to, is just a, a great combination because you have an incentive and you have a service that's a quality service. You can speak to someone that's a professional that you don't have to pay for. So it's just a <laughs> it's, great combination of things. It's crazy. I remember ever since I met you seeing all and all of us talking and seeing all the reviews and seeing all the, all the press and how, specifically with the mental health issue that we're having worldwide, how many people you guys are helping from a mental health perspective. Like you guys have saved a ton of people that were in really rough shape that didn't really see any other option for themselves. And you guys got them out of those situations. Yeah. It's gotten you featured on four. You were on the cover of Forbes. Yeah. Yeah. That okay. Was, that was amazing. That like that, that's pretty <laughs> fucking cool, man. Yeah, and, and not just being on the cover of Forbes, making a ton of money because whatever, yeah. anybody can make a ton of money, but yeah. doing something that is against the grain, right? It's, Maybe people are thinking you're fucking insane because you're doing it, but you're trying to do something good. And while still following that entrepreneurial spirit that you have, right, it's amazing to be recognized that way. I love seeing seeing you win. I love seeing you traveling around the world, going to the UN, speaking you know, with world leaders because it goes to show that anyone could do it, bro. You started this from Mexico, man. Am, uh, am I correct? You that's, started this we, from Mexico? We started, I started it in uh, Mexico City, which is – doesn't have the the startup ecosystem that that you have in the U.S. or in Europe. It's just or in Asia. It's it's a uh, much smaller, much much smaller. There's a lot less funding, uh, and you know it's just you can do it anywhere really. I mean that's the beauty of the the, the times we're living. We have the internet now. We have different ways of doing things. We have uh, just so many different ways of 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 starting something, and, and and you can do it from anywhere really. That's that's why I think it's important for people to understand that, yes, we're, we have presence in the U.S., we have presence in Latin America, we're in multiple countries now offering our services, and it's just, uh, it's, it's something really significant to have started it in a place like Mexico. Uh, but at the same time, I value having started in Mexico because of the fact that the, the, the experience of living in a country like Mexico where there's so much poverty really gave, insight. yeah, gave insight into, building something that was available for just for everyone you know we had to make something that was universally available uh you don't have the payment barrier in places like mexico there's people that they have a way to find us that get it to get a smartphone most people find ways to get a smartphone you can buy them on street markets and things like that but payment methods they may not have a card they may not even have a bank account so you know that's it's uh it's a different it's a, it's a different uh situation down there a lot of people is, don't think about that like we, we pull out our card and put it and download the app. There's people that don't have a fucking card or have a bank and they need to see a doctor. So just to, for, to simplify, you download the app, sign up for the app. As soon as you log in, call a doctor. Yeah. You just press the button in the press center the and That's it, it. it connects you to a doctor. It may take a minute or two, but yeah, it'll, it'll connect you to, you know, it's similar to ordering an Uber in, in that sense. You press a button and 
you get a doctor on the other line or a psychological therapist. Actually, our psychological service is the one that grows the most. Yeah. I know in the last couple of weeks we had at least five people that uh, that said they were on the verge of suicide that called in. And, you know, just to – they have someone to talk to. You know, they may be alone in their homes or wherever, and it's just uh, – you know, that, that's a life that you're, you're p- potentially saving. Crazy, man. And it's just – it's open and free. That That's, that's really – that's why we do this. That's how we're changing the world. And, and in order to change it, we had to make a scalable model. So, so this is really, I believe, the power of, of entrepreneurship, the power of, of being part of something like this. This is, uh, it's really how I always felt, uh, since I created my life philosophy. I, th- I thought, uh, this is where the effort has to be put into. It, it's really doing things that are important. You know, I admire people like Elon Musk. He, he's, hell yeah an amazing person but one of the things i he always says is do something that's important because you know times get tough and if uh you're doing something that's important it'll get you through those hard times and and it's true you know i always say you know the the whole uh process of starting a company and going through creating a product and pricing it right and doing all those things and but you know providing free basic health care for the world which is our mission is, is, uh, so important that it doesn't matter. You know, it gets you up in the morning. You're like, it's, it's whatever, whatever's coming to me is, uh, worth doing. Now for people to understand, right? So, so we could give them the, the big picture. This started in Mexico, guys. And we're sitting in the United States discussing it right now, but tell them how many countries in the world are currently using the service. Uh, 24 countries right now. We have all of Latin America except Brazil and Spain and in the U.S. and Florida. So, so we're, soon to be expanding to the rest of the u.s we have uh we're preparing for that next stage and we're going to increase our our presence in latin america and also start offering it in different languages in europe uh we have a a deal that we're that we're uh, soon to execute with the united nations to to put in in eastern africa um that the the what they're the plan over there with in africa is there's a lot of um there's a lot of people that they've captured from Al Shabaab. It's it's like a radical uh, terrorist group that they capture children in in these you know the villages and they indoctrinate them with their the way of thinking and ideology, and then they send them off to be uh, you know suicide uh, bombers and things like that. So to do horrible things. So they, they, they've been capturing these people, putting them in prisons. But the, the irony is that they put them in prisons and they become even more radical inside the prisons. So, and, and it's tough to get, you know, psychologists into those prisons or doctors. And so they're just, in, these places are really bad. So the UN thought it was, it would be great for us to put, uh, access, you know, screens access within these prisons to, to try to, uh, to try to change the way of thinking of some people to 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 teach them forgiveness, really. Hell That's, yeah! And people people tend to overlook that because oh, they're they're the bad guy, they're in jail. Hey, some of those bad guys might get out one day, well, right? They might serve their sentence, and we want to make sure that we prepare people to uh, prepare them for success, even if they've screwed up before. Like exactly, how are they going to give back to, to society when they get out? Yeah, you know the thing is that if you can change the way of thinking of just one person uh, out of ten, let's say that person may end up changing the minds of others around ripple effect around, yeah. yeah so so that's why it's so important because that's why it's worth doing things like that you know it's it's a tough thing but you can still have a lot of positive impact even if you can just change the trajectory of one person's life and it's the same in, in poverty struck regions and in, in places like latin america or africa if one person if you can tell one person uh you know, it's all right. You can figure this out. There's other ways, you know, go out, read things. Uh, if you can just change the trajectory of one person and, and guide them out of their situation, they may pull others with them. And, and that's, that's just a ripple effect that it's really hard to measure, but it's, which we know that it happens all the time. You know, that's, so it's, that's why it's so important. And, you know, we're working constantly of, on trying to get our services into everyone's hands worldwide. You know, that's amazing, bro. That's why, that's what really drew my attention to your brand. And when we were introduced to each other, um, a little over probably a year and a half ago when we were discussing just now, 
I really love the business model, and I love what you guys are doing. I love the branding. You guys, do, you, ha- you guys have excellent branding. That that really stood out to me. But more than the branding, because I'm a branding and marketing freak, uh, it was just seeing how I could implement what I've learned over the past seven years in digital marketing and marketing to bring something to the table to something so wonderful, which is, first of all, thank you so much for giving myself and my team the opportunity to work with you guys. Um, it's been amazing. We've learned so much from you guys. We're really inspired by what you guys have done. We just love it, man. And I've been really looking forward to doing this podcast. We could have done it remotely, but we had to do it in person. Just Not just because of the business or any of that, but because we've developed a, a close friendship through it. We, we get along with each other. We give each other great feedback and we remain in touch. And it's been great, man. It's been great to be able to meet and just see the progress. Because when I, bro, when you met me, I wasn't even traveling the world doing keynotes and speaking, right? When you met me, I didn't have a podcast. This podcast right now, 48 countries are listening. You get me? So it's crazy how things could change in a year for you, for me, like for anyone listening to this, any kid or any young person or even older person like listening to this right now, like no idea is too crazy. As long as you know that it's amazing and that you could kill it and do a great job, it doesn't matter what people say because people have told me I'm crazy. They've laughed. Uh, who do you think you are? Why have you done this or that? You know, most of the time that people are criticizing you or, or, or bringing one of your ideas down, it means that they're already below you. And a lot of those times, those are the people that actually need help and need somebody to speak to, like a doc.com service, right? Like a, a psychologist, because sometimes we're in a bad place, man. Sometimes we're doing stupid shit. Sometimes we have the wrong mentality. And sometimes we're hanging around the wrong people, yeah. right? And we need to get ourselves out of those situations. And a lot of the times people are lonely, man, and they don't have anybody to speak to. And like, you know, I, I, I'm very blessed to be able to have a family that supports me, friends, colleagues, um, people that just look out and look out for my best interests. But it's not like that for everybody. And that's one of the main goals that I have with my one of my brands, Hustle Inspires Hustle, which is connect with people around the world, young people around the world that need a good role model. Like who 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 did you need when you were younger? Right. Like that yes. older brother, that older sister, a role model. So you don't have to always go down the wrong path, right? right. Like, that's like right. you changing the world, like that shit inspires the shit out of me. You know, that's one of the things that drives me and you're inspiring the next guy and the next guy and the next guy. And it's a ripple effect. It is. It is. You know, I, I, myself, uh, I grew up with a single mother, an amazing mother. She really was a very positive person in my life. I, I, uh, I always look back and say, thank God I had a mother like that. But, but, uh, you know, during my, you know, adolescent years, uh, when I was a teenager, I remember just looking at people, different people that I was, you know, trying to admire people, uh, that, that were doing things, successful things. And it really is important to, uh, if you feel that, that void to search out and look for people that, that are doing good things, you know, that you can, you can go down the path, you can go down the wrong path. But uh, always know that living the best life means that you're doing something good. And and why put so much effort into things if you can't, if you don't want to live the best life? I mean, that, that really is. Uh, so there's people out there that, especially with nowadays, you can use the Internet to, to look at YouTube videos and, you know, you can get inspired. And this is this is a great thing that you're doing. I mean, it's uh it really, I know that there's people like me, you know, back in the day, like I said, I listened to Jim Rohn. He was an, an inspiring person. You know, he's not alive anymore, but, but, uh, I just remember thinking, wow, this man, he really knows he, what's up. You know, he yeah. understands what life is. And, you know, people say, oh, you know, motivational speakers and things like that, but it's really not about that. It's, it's thinking of what, what kind of life do you want to live really? And, and how are you going to start getting on that path? You know, everyone has to create a plan. Everyone has to start something. But really, the most important thing is getting started, you know, looking, creating a plan. If And if you don't have success in the first plan, you know, move on. You know, you probably learn something. Everything, every setback is always a, a crumb. A stepping comes, stone, yeah. Yeah, a stepping stone comes with a bigger opportunity down the road. So, so be optimistic, never give up, and just look towards people that you admire that do positive things. Amazing. Charles, where can people follow you on social media? I know you recently got verified, so congratulations on that. It was about time that the universe recognized the great work that you've been doing besides a Forbes cover. All right. <laughs> um, tell them where they can find you, man. Yeah, you can uh, you can follow me on Twitter on, at, uh, at Charles Nader. That's uh, my Twitter handle. And... 
on Instagram at Chuck Nader. Uh, yeah, Chuck Nader and N A D O N A D E R N A D E R. Yeah, that's right. Alrighty, and what about the apps, man? For those of the people listening right now that want to download this app, check it out. As long as it's available in their country, I know you're yeah. going worldwide soon. But where can they? How can they find you? Well, there's two ways of doing it. You can go on the App Store or Play Store and just look up Doc.com. Just put it in the search uh, search bar, and it'll uh, it'll show you Doc Health and Doc Emotions. Uh, if you're in Florida or if in your if you're in Latin America, or you can go on Doc.com. There's there's links to uh, the App Store and Play Store there. We're also about to relaunch our site with a text service. You can It's free also. Uh, you can ask questions in text on, on doc.com. This is happening within a matter of days, actually, probably. Okay. Uh, so that's a worldwide service that's in 40 different languages, uh, over, over 40 languages. I'm sorry. It's, it's, it's designed so we can start treating people at least in a, in a text format in multiple languages. Of course. So, yeah, man. So it's uh, wherever in the world people can ask questions in text and get responded by a doctor uh, and a psychologist, too, uh, right on, on our site, doc.com. Uh, that'll be released, like I said, in a matter of days. So so basically, doc.com, you know, that's that's such a simple thing. Yeah, I mean, guys, like, for real, like, doc.com. That's it. Like, that's all you got to type in. That's all you got to do. Guys, this is Alex Quinn. You're listening to the Hustle Inspires Hustle podcast. Today we had Charles Nader, CEO of Doc.com. Thank you guys so much for listening in. Send questions, rate, review, subscribe. Let us know what you think. Let us know who you want to hear from. Thank you guys for tuning in. See you guys next time. Hey.